All right, we're ready to start to apply the pitch to our tool so that we can start the polishing phase. This comes in a little box, looks, in, at least this did, that I got years ago, came in a box, looks like a little Chinese food container. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't get any of the container inside it, even though it's harmless, it kind of messes up um, the way that it spreads on, and as I, if any of it goes in, I'll just peel it out when, it's, when I'm stirring it. But I've got it over the top of a hot plate, you can see that. I'm on setting of seven. I've uh, just completed this phase with another telescope or with another um, tool, and it took me about 45 minutes to heat this up from the solid phase. Uh, be patient with it. You don't want to overheat it. It decomposes. And so as we go through that, I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Let you see what's going on down inside. Okay. Now you can see. Down inside there, it's a little bit liquid. You can see the smoke that's coming off from it. Don't do this over an open flame. Do it over a hot plate. That's the safest way to do it because the vapors are flammable, as is the pitch. If it gets hot enough to flow, it's almost hot enough to ignite. So I'm going to kind of keep it to a minimum when it comes to that. These are tools that we've used to grind 8-inch telescopes with in the past. I like to use them on a tool because I, as I reheat it, uh, the glass takes the uh, heat better than a sample of wood. You can actually do it with a couple of pieces of plywood laminated together and put the pitch on top of it. That works just as well if you don't have an extra tool. But what I do with this is I work with these tools. Here's one that I just poured a few minutes ago. You can see that I've got a piece of tape around it. Now when I'm checking it to see if it's hard enough by pushing the edge of the tape and I don't get any flex back so it's tough enough to, it's cooled enough to actually take the, the tape off. And you notice that it just looks like a cookie sitting on top of that can see the cerium oxide from the previous times that I've used this exact tool. Now while that's still warm, I'm going to put an imprint on that, but I'm going to set that aside for a second anyway and continue on how I'm doing this. Like I indicated, I'm going to wrap a piece of tape around there. You just saw me take the one off of that. Put it up a half an inch, uh, probably no more than that. And when you pour your pitch onto it, you can just pour it right on top of there. I did it when the glass was cold. Um, there's not really much of a way of heating it up. You don't want to heat it up in water and get it wet. It won't stick to it. So I just pour it on top there. I get my pitch relatively hot, make my dam, pour the um, pitch right over the top of it. Now once I've got my um, dam and pitch already done, I'll allow it to cool and then I will imprint a pattern onto it. I'll show you how that's done. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the dam around this. You see I'm ready with that then. Now if you look at the consistency of my pitch, it's quite soupy at this point in time. So now as I pour it onto the mirror, you don't want to put too much on there, it'll just run all over everywhere. But you do want it to level out best you can. Quarter of an inch thick is more than ample. Now I'm rotating this because my table's a little bit off. It's a little thicker on that one side than this side, and it will flow. So it looks like I could utilize a little bit more in there. Still plenty thin. You can see it running. I didn't boil it. There's Uh, 
Now that's going to work. It's just going to sit there until it cools off a little bit. Like I said, you can push the, uh, you can test the sides of it here, pushing the tape in a little bit. When it starts to harden up, you'll feel it harden up. Now I'm using pine pitch. There are other kinds of pitch out there. This happens to be the kind that they sent me when they got it. It's got a great aroma. It makes my lab smell wonderful. It doesn't take long because I put it on that cold glass for it to uh, harden up. If I wanted to, I could put it on. I've got a couple of sheets of three quarter inch plywood here, laminated together with a waterproof proof glue. I could actually use that as well. I like the glass a little bit better, especially since I have them because that way. When I need to retromp my pattern, I can heat the whole thing up in hot water until it's pliable. You can't very well do that uh, in the other one. I mean, you can. You can turn it upside down and just put it in the hot water. It's just that this works a little better, and if you have the tools, I use them. Um, that way works just as well. Um, a little cheaper if you bought the blank with just the blank instead of the grinding tool, and if you've made a ceramic mold for a grinding tool, it works that way too. Here's one that's made out of plaster of Paris. Actually it's a brand name called Fix All, which is close enough. You buy down at the hardware store, it's $13 a bag. You can make probably at least two to three of these. I've got a this one is a 10 inch that I was going to use to grind my 8 inch mirrors on, or to polish my 8 inch mirrors on. I've got a 12 inch I was going to polish my 10 inch mirrors on. A little overlap does not hurt on this process. It actually makes for a better curved surface. But uh, I'm using the glass just because I have them. Uh, a great way to make a grinding tool, if you've ever seen that done. Not a polishing tool, but a grinding tool is to take that and adhere a bunch of ceramic tile on top of it um, with a little bit of epoxy resin, and you can grind those. You can grind your mirror with that. It works just as well. I just happen to use the tools. In fact, you can see in my lab here. There's plenty more of them. I've got them sitting all over my lab right now. I'm a physics teacher and. I'm having my physics students build telescopes. In fact, there's a, you can see the one that we just finished sitting right over there, the horizontal one. It's an 8-inch mirror. I've got a, my 12-inch mirror I built a number of years ago sitting there. And I've got the two 10-inchers that we're doing this year as well. So all of this, and just different stages. Now, as, as this is continuing to harden up, I could probably take the tape off right now and tromp the pattern into it, but I'm going to wait just a few more minutes and you'll see that happen as we proceed on. All right, this is tacked up. We've only been about three minutes away. You can see if I push it, I was having trouble with it pulling, but if I pull the tape out relatively quickly, you can see it comes right off, leaves no residue, and now I'm ready to tromp the pattern. So I've got, this is just a piece of aluminum I have scrap laying around in my uh, shop. I also build some model airplanes here and there for my physics kids. But you'll notice that when I do it this way now, when it's softer, I do a much better tromp like this. Going across it. You want them in about one inch squares. And that is significantly better than the one that I just did a few minutes ago because I wasn't quite as hard. Now, once you get it to that point, that is ready to use. Um, if I grab my mirror,
There's the mirror blank that I'm about to polish. Now let me make a major impression on your mind here. This is very important. You keep everything really clean. Now I've got some of the the uh, material laying around from the pitch, but I cleaned up this table really, really well before I started. You can see my tool. I've sat it there, my, my stand, I've cleaned it up. In fact, this is only the second time I've used this stand. I built it new specifically, or the head of the stand, specifically for polishing them. Now when you're going to polish them like this, because I'm using a, I want to minimize my vibration, and I'm using a tool that I've already used, I've just taken some of this white foam, I'll put it down inside there. Now when I've got my trunk waffle tool here, I can set it down there and it's not going to rock. Now what I've done is I've taken my cerium oxide and I've mixed it in quite a thick paste that's inside of here. Now I've, I'm still warm with that and it's still it's quite, I'm going to use the term impressionable. I can actually shake out some of my cerium oxide onto that tool. Okay, I've got my cerium oxide on there, and while that's still somewhat impressionable, I'm going to work that around a little bit and make sure that it's basically the flat that I need. Now, you see I'm a little bit further out on the edges. While that's still impressionable, I can squash it down like that, and as I'm looking through the glass, I can tell when it's waffled out properly. Still a little bit less here. Once I've got my pattern established and that's about right, I can go to polishing. Now one of the things I've got to do is make sure that I take a knife and I'm going to clean that up. You see what it's doing here? It starts to chip. I'll do that with a knife before I actually do very much polishing. But that is now ready. I've built a polishing tool and we're ready for the cerium oxide coat.